Judy's all dirty. Let's go get her cleaned up. Sweet, looks like I've got a free one. There we go, now she's all shiny again. Hey guys, how's it going? It's James here from Carradu Etc. Today I'm going to be showing you, giving you a rundown on every single bloody thing that I have done to my legacy. So I just spent like the last couple hours taking it to the car wash and vacuuming and detailing the inside but every single time I try and do that like on a nice day, oh a butterfly <laughs> on a nice day like today it's freaking windy and like you vacuum dust out and then more goes in and Christchurch is quite a dusty city so it's so freaking annoying but anyway here's my car so for those of you who are new to the uh, new to this channel and haven't you know been on here before this is my 2014 Subaru Legacy it's a Japanese import, not New Zealand, uh, new and obviously not American, because I'm in New Zealand, by the way. A lot of you guys, I think, uh, a lot of people who come across my channel think, oh, okay, he's an Aussie. No, I'm in New Zealand. Um, so that's why it's Japanese and not like Australian or American market. Now, so this video, I've got so much to go over with this car, um, and I don't have time to go into all of it in very, in, in very high detail. So I'm gonna pretty much fly through this as quick as I can, and I'm gonna link at the end of this video, I have a whole playlist of me installing pretty much everything in this car. You guys, if, you, if you're a regular watcher, you'll know that I have that great big playlist and I film anything I do to this car. So if you're new and you wanna see how I've done any of this sort of stuff, make sure you check out that playlist at the end, either watch it all through if you're really that game or um, go through it and find a couple of interesting things that you might like. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Something else I should say is, because uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to call this video yet, probably something about modded, but um, this car, when I say modded, it's not mechanically modded. This is a stock, it comes with a stock engine. I haven't changed anything. I'm not a, I'm not a boy racer. I don't need to go extra fast or anything like that. I haven't put wheels on it. I am an auto technician by trade, so I have done heaps of sound system equipment, lighting equipment and, elect and electrical work but nothing mechanical. So, let's get into it. I'm gonna have to start on the outside, I think, and work my way in. And also I'm gonna have to come back at about dusk and at night as well to film some shots, because the LEDs on this car really, 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 hopefully you can hear me, hopefully the dead kitten's working. Um, the LEDs look so good at dusk and at night, whereas during the day you can't really tell that they're on. But it's a nice day, so I figured I might as well make a video. Right, so, where should I start? Okay, so let's start up the front of the car, looking at the bonnet end. So, just trying to think of what way I want to go through all this stuff. It's probably not going to be in any uh, real sensical or sensible order. I'm just going to run around the car, point, I did that, I did that, I did that. And you guys can check it out later on if you want. So, up here, we've got some daytime running lights, because this car didn't come with any. So I've got one of these uh, rubber strip sort of ones which goes down in here and I've got it nicely wedged between the bonnet and the headlight. And when you lift the bonnet up it does stay in place there so that's good. And these ones act as a daytime running light and as an indicator. So if I come over to the right hand side here, it's going to be really hard to see. But if I put my hand over it you can see it is glowing white. It's just hard to see because they are quite dim. Uh, they're not super expensive, they're quite cheap ones so they're not very bright during the day but at night they look awesome. So it is a daytime running light, and they also flash as indicators as well. Very dimly though, albeit. I've also replaced the park lights with some nice blue spotlighty sort of blue LEDs. Um, I haven't done anything with the fog lights yet, and you'll see I've got some parking sensors as well. I've got four of them across the front. And I've also got a camera down under here. I can't tell if you can see that or not, because the sun is making this really hard to see what you guys can see. It's in there. Where the frick is it? There it is. There's the camera. So yeah, I've got daytime running lights, upgraded park lights, four parking sensors and a front facing camera. I'll show you how all the parking sensors and cameras work once I go inside. Round to the back. We've got some blue LEDs up in the, uh, above the number plate. They look really good. 
my reversing camera which I installed, obviously rear parking sensors as well, part of the uh, kit. And that's about everything that's on the back and I did put a, a couple of letters there, the SQ is aftermarket and I'll explain that later on, you might get the gist. Oh, I also put um, these chrome number plate trims on the front and the back as well because the ones that they came with were just stock black ones and they weren't very good looking so some chrome ones look a bit better especially since this car's got so much chrome on it on the front and back and before we go inside the car there's also another camera just up under here Shit, I seriously can't tell what the camera is looking at at the moment eh? the sun glare is making it impossible so we've got a camera under there Whew, that sun is really high I really wish I had like a large indoor garage it would make this so much easier but I don't Stickers, we got a nice Focal sticker there. ABS car security. Rockford Fosgate decal. ABS again. Focal. And that's pretty much everything on the outside of the vehicle. As I say, it's a bit of a uh, it's a bit of a sleeper, so I don't want really everyone to know exactly what is in it. Let's uh, fuck that wind. Let's go under the bonnet now because there's a fair bit of stuff been done under here. It's all electrical though. I always say that my favourite thing about this bonnet is this. Those gas struts are awesome. It's like the little things you don't think about. Okay, so under here, um, I have... So under here we've got a fair bit of wiring that's been done. The sun is really making it hard for the camera to focus on everything, isn't it? So, starting from the battery. This is still the stock battery and I will upgrade this at some point given that I have a mate who actually is a battery supplier so that will definitely get done. Got some Rockford Fosgate uh, battery clamps on here. They are dual zero gauge and dual eight gauge. So the negative here we got two zero gauges coming off. One of these goes down to the um, one of these goes down to the rail or the, the body. I'm just trying to remember where I ran it to. It goes down into there. I can't even see where I did it. But this one here goes to the chassis rail, and this one here goes down in the gap there. It's impossible to see because of the light, but that is uh, connected to the factory negative uh, terminal that was on the on the factory negative clamp that was on the terminal here. So that just basically goes straight to the uh, the factory negative, which goes off to certain parts of the car. And we've got a couple of other ones here. So these two little monster eight gauge. By the way, this is Rockford Fosgate cable. And then these 8 gauge ones here are monster 8 gauge cable. One of them goes to the body, goes to the engine block just down there. And the other one goes to the alternator body just here. And then over on the positive side we've got another two zero gauges. One of them, as I, one of them also goes to the factory positive clamp. So this did used to clamp onto here. So I just ran a piece of zero gauge down and back up to it with a bolt. The other one goes to my big 100, my 150 amp fuse holder here and that supplies the sound system with power. And then the other little eight gauge uh, red here, that follows with the factory loom and goes to the alternator. So basically it was an alternator power line upgrade that just goes straight there. I wanted to basically maximize my electrical system. So it's essentially a big three. We've got an alternator upgrade, a ground upgrade, alternator ground has been upgraded, engine ground has been upgraded. The only thing I haven't really done is uh, put a, another, put like another wire from the body of, sorry, from the block of the engine to the body of the car. That's something else some people kind of sometimes do, but I don't really think it's necessary since I have really good cables going from the body to the battery and from the battery to the engine, it's the same thing. I did also upgrade the factory ground a wee bit. This is the factory ground for the whole car. Well, what it was anyway, that little tiny 8 gauge there. Um, when they do these, for some reason, they don't scratch the paint off underneath. So I did that, put it all back on, and then covered it with clear coat. These two little ones here are a couple of other things that I've got grounded in here uh, for other things. So like here we've got this uh, little voltage reducer and, and timer device underneath and that is for the daytime running lights because I only want the daytime running lights to turn on when the car is running. And then the voltage reducer, what it does is it prevents the daytime running lights from seeing anything over 12 volts because I found that when I was running them at 14 volts when they were when the car was running then I was getting a bit of flickering from them and I didn't yeah and, and they're cheap so I wanted to preserve them a wee bit. We've got a Rockford Fosgate decal on here this is just the factory fuse holder. 
and that's pretty much everything that's been done under the bonnet. All of the wiring for like the uh, parking sensors and the camera and the all the wiring for the daytime running lights and all that stuff has been run with the factory looms inside of all this conduit. You'll see there's an extra bit of conduit here coming out which goes along, jumps along here and down so that's the wiring for uh, this daytime running light because most of its power supply comes from over this sort of side. And I believe that's everything under the bonnet. As I say, it's all, ele all electrical. So that should be everything that is outside the car. We can probably go inside the car now, get out of the noise. Woo, it's hot. Yeah, sorry, our, sorry, our neighbors have kids that like to roll up and down the cockpit driver on their plastic wheeled toys and it's really, really loud. We can hear it inside the house. So inside the car here, Jesus, it is hot. Might start it up. So. Inside the car, it is mostly sound system and LED related stuff. So I'll start with the sound system and basically give you guys the rundown of it. And as I say, I'm not going to try. I'm going to try and not go into too much detail. If you want to check out how I've installed any of the stuff, you have to go through the playlist and find the videos. Um, and yeah, there is a lot of them. So every the heart that controls everything for the sound is my Pioneer AVH X8850BT. So this is only like one generation old at the moment. The current successor of this is the Z5050BT, but they took some things out of the model and that they didn't continue on into that. Um, they took some things out when they went from this model up to the next one. And so I really prefer to stick with this one. It feels like a more of a, uh, a powerhouse, whereas the Z5050 is a bit more cut down and minimalistic. They took some things out, I think, just to get the price point down. So that's the stereo. From that stereo, I have three sets of micro XLN Monster 17 foot RCA cables going down to the boot where I have a Rockford Fosgate 5 channel amplifier, which I will show you when I get down there. The 5 channel amplifier is powering my front speakers, my rear speakers, and my subwoofer. For the front speakers, I have Focal PS165F3. The woofer is down there, the 6.5 inch woofer. The mid range is in the factory tweeter location there, little 80 millimeter mid-range, and then the tweeter is in these pods which I built here. That light is just messing with the camera so much. And I built these out of kneaded, that's so they're solid, and that's the tweeter. And I've also put like all over the car, little Focal, little Focal emblems there. There's another one up the top there. So that's the front speakers. In the back doors, you won't be able to see them because they're just coaxials and they're in the factory locations. I have the Focal PC165F, which is just the two-way coaxial version of these front speakers, and I love how they sound. Before we go any further back, I'll show you, oh, we'll talk about what else I've done up here. Um, in the center console, this car didn't come with any, so I installed my own, my own, there's a USB and auxiliary port there and there's a cigarette lighter there. That cigarette lighter wasn't there when I got the car, so I put that one in, and that's wired to permanent, so that I can uh, charge things uh, in the car while I'm out of it if I need to. Like if I go up skiing and my camera or my phone needs a charge, I can leave it in here charging while I, without having to worry about leaving the key in the car. And then there is an LED just there, which lights up this whole area, and I'll show you guys that a wee bit later on. I think what I'll do is I'll point out all the LEDs in this car and show you more what they look like when it gets darker because in this bright sun you're just not going to see what they look like. Moving on up, I've got my cup holders and there are LEDs around the outside of here which I will show you later on. Handbrake and to the right of that, this is where the factory uh, seat heaters buttons would have gone. But this car doesn't have seat heaters. we got the, and I've got my Rock Fosgate PLC2 so this is my base knob basically, it turns the subwoofer up and down. Um, in volume because I like to have you know a bit of adjustability while I'm listening in this cubby under here We've got so this here. This is another auxiliary and USB point since that's my stereo has two USB inputs It has one auxiliary, but they're both just doubled together So you can use either and then to the right there There is another cigarette lighter and that cigarette lighter is the one that was on the left here So yeah, that cigarette lighter was on the left but I moved it to the right and put the USB and auxiliary there. And then there's another one of those LEDs under there to light that area. Moving up the center, in the back of this cubby, there is another LED way down the back there, you can see behind some spare glasses I have. And I have an LED strip up in behind here to kind of illuminate that crack. And I think that's everything for there. Up the top we have 
my basic Valtronics radar detector. It's just an oldie, but it does a good job. And that is hardwired in, and I've got a switch for it down under here, which I can flick on and off. On the steering wheel here, you'll notice that I have a black side and a silver side. This is one of, uh, one of the things that I still have yet to do on this car. But um, this car didn't come with any audio steering wheel controls. It came with the full cruise control and SI drive setup and a blank panel on this side. But I really, really, really wanted steering wheel controls. So I sourced my own one out of uh, America. Like came with a kit, came with this, as well as this side, but the side that I got for the, uh, it came with a side for this, but it didn't have SI drive built in, so I ended up having to splice and use this side of this kit and this side of this kit. And at some point I do plan on taking this silver trim off and trying to get some paint to match this. And I might even paint this when I do it because, uh, interestingly enough, this was factory silver and this was factory black. So I don't know why that is, but uh, I might paint this and this both black when I get, a, get around to doing that. So yeah, this... This was a real mission, it's quite a long video when I did the install, but that's all wired up and the wires go through the clock spring and that, that was all factory and it works with my stereo. So I've also got my, my volume, my seeking, mode, voice control, pick up and hang up. Uh, just one little thing over on the right hand side here. So I've got my backlight level adjuster, this light basically adjusts the brightness of the um, factory illumination lights all the way around the car which is like behind the steering wheel controls, behind all the buttons, the brightness of the dash, so that's there. But on this side there wasn't anything, there was just another blank. And I'm a wee bit OCD, I don't know why, but I feel like I, I really don't like blank panels. Um, even these ones down here are annoying me. But um, I got this little scrolling thing out of another older Legacy, and that, it doesn't do anything, I've just mounted it in there because I think it looks better having all the blanks filled. That's just my own OCD thing, I don't think anyone else is really going to get onto that. But yeah, that's something I put in just to make it look good but I maybe do want to fill in these blanks with something at some point. It is worth saying that the uh, MFD on this is in English. I did work out how to change it to English and I have a video on that because it did come factory Japanese and fortunately it's one of the only cars I've come across from Japan where it does have a language setting in it so that was lucky because I would have been so annoyed if it was stuck in J Japanese. Um, up the top here now it's worth saying that the lights, hello, that the lights here on both of these uh, sun visors, they are literally the only lights on the inside of the car that I haven't changed out, I believe. They are still uh, festoon bulbs, but um, I've upgraded these from, uh, from festoon bulbs to warm white LEDs, because I liked the warm white as opposed to the cool white. So they are both upgraded. You'll see up here, that's my microphone for my Bluetooth and the stereo. These here are ultrasonic sensors, they are part of my aftermarket security system um, so it does have a CAN bus alarm in it which uses the factory immobilizers and key and central locking but also adds in these as well as a tilt sensor and it monitors the bonnet and everything like that and has a siren obviously. Ultrasonic sensors are great because if a window is broken they go off and if a pin switch on a door fails and the door opens they go off. If someone hides in the car and you arm it and then they move around they'll, they'll detect, detect the person moving around and they'll go off. So they are a very versatile sensor. There's two of them. I'm not gonna talk too much about my security system. They're really good to have. I do have a dash cam here, which is just, to, you know, I think it's just a good thing to have. I think, I do think it's ugly, but I know as soon as I take it out of my car, that will be the day someone crashes into me. So I'm probably gonna have to be stuck with having one from now on. Maybe I'll upgrade it to a nicer looking one at some point. I do have a GoPro mount over there, but I used to use that more when I did vlogs, but I don't do it as much anymore. See my custom uh, registration tag holder there? That's just my Rego tag, but I put a, a relatively similar size Rock Fosgate sticker over it, and I think it looks really cool. Uh, in the glove box, there's a bit of stuff been done in here. First of all, we've got a voltmeter over there, which turns on and off with accessories, so I can just check my car's running voltage in case I'm sitting in the car listening to music with the engine off, and that way I can you know, keep an eye on it just in case it gets a bit low and I want to start the car up. We've got an LED bulb, uh, another one of these LEDs here in the center pointing down. I did have one in the factory location, but eventually what I ended up doing is putting this one in its own location and putting the factory red LED back in. Also, by the way, there is the other tweeter pod over there, and those tweeter pods are on axis. So you'll see that that one there is looking directly at me, directly at the camera. 
and so is this one. So they're not symmetrical, they're asymmetrical. Both pointing directly at the driver's head's position. And I believe that is everything up the front. I'm probably missing, oh. I believe that is everything up the front. I'm probably missing something. There is more LEDs which I will show you. So, I have more of those LED circular ones in the back of every single pocket down here. In the back of these pockets firing forward, in the front right, front left, rear right, rear left door we have an LED firing forwards. Don't know if I'm going to be able to show you because the sun's going to mess with it. Nah. I have an LED strip up underneath, up above the driver's feet firing down, illuminating the area red, as well as a set behind their legs firing forward. And I have the same over on the passenger side, above their feet and behind their legs. In the back here, this is what I was, uh, where I was talking about the rear speakers are, the Focal PC165F. Also got the little emblem there to make it look good. Um, I have upgraded all of the dome lights, so you can see it's actually got one of those grid LEDs in there instead. Warm white, sticking with the theme. Same goes for the one at the back there. As I say, more LEDs in the back of here. And other than that, the back is pretty stock standard. Oh, there's LEDs above my feet here up on the bottom side of this seat as well. Underside of that seat, underside of that seat. So pretty much all of the footwell in this car is illuminated red. And I believe that is everything for the back. We could probably head on back to the uh, boot now and show you what I got going on down there. That wind's gonna be annoying, but okay. So in the boot, we've got a pullback cover. So here's my Rockford Fosgate T1 S112. 12 inch shallow mount power series subwoofer and I love it, it sounds great. Uh, I would say if you're thinking of getting one of these subwoofers they do take quite a while to run in. I found that in the first like month I thought I was a bit disappointed with it but just give it time, it gets real soft after a while and moves really really well. I've got this uh, trunk liner in here which I just bought off eBay, was it? What does that say? A Acru trunk tray or something? It's just a PVC thing and it's like to protect the carpet and it's because I sometimes put some heavy things in here. By the way, I've got my little, I've got a remote for my stereo to go back here in case I need to adjust anything from back here. And I just put that there because the stereo came with the remote and I'm not going to use it up the front. So I might as well be back here. There's those LEDs that got upgraded. I put this uh, trunk, cargo trunk net thing in and it's like, cable tied all the way along the side of the subwoofer, along the back, that's just my car hoodie that I keep in there in case it gets bad weather or something. And then there's some uh, carabiners which latch onto the factory points here, which are really hard to take off with one hand. So this whole thing does come out but it does require move, removing the subwoofer because the subwoofer is velcro down and you'll see that it fits just perfectly underneath this uh, tray here. So the subwoofer can't go anywhere and it's literally just held in with velcro at the bottom and a velcro, one side of velcro strip at the top because it can't rock forward because this thing doesn't just freely lift it up, you actually have to delatch it. So over on the right hand side here if I lift up the trunk tray you'll see here is my amplifier Rockford Fosgate T1000X5AD so it's a micro four channel, uh, micro five channel amplifier, 1000 watts RMS total 100 watts by 4 on the speaker sides, so 100 watts by 4 at 4 ohms, and 600 watts by 1 on the subwoofer side at 2 ohms or 1 ohm. And I have some red LEDs around it to make it look good at night. I also have fans all around this amplifier because it get, I found um, at first it was getting quite warm in that little cubby under there, so I put fans all around it uh, go, going with the flow of the air intake and exhaust. I'll probably show you that actually. There we go. You see we've got some fans at the front blowing air into the air. As I was saying, some fans there, a great big fan in behind the panel there, or under here. Just keeps it cool. Then over on the right hand side here, we've got my crossovers for my front speakers. Passive crossovers, also illuminated in red. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you this. I'll try. If I just carefully lift this up. Uh, it's very hard to see. see. See where that block of foam is there? You look just above it, you can see blue. That is a uh, sine wave inverter. So I can get AC 240 volts in here if I need to. Basically I pull that little block of foam out and this thing plugs in and I can get uh, my 240 AC volts to power anything I need to. And it's a very powerful one as well. I don't use it that often, but 
it's good to have. And then I just keep some rigs and stuff under there. And I believe that's everything in the boot. So I just closing the boot there, I remembered I told you guys about that SQ sticker that I put on. Those, S those letters under the legacy. Um, if you don't know me or you don't watch my videos regularly, then you may not be aware, but I love sound quality, which is why I've gone for my Focal Flax three-way components when this car it realistically only needed two ways. But I love really high-end sound quality, so I thought I'd put a little bit of wank value on the back of it by putting that SQ there. It makes my car unique and different to all the other ones on the road. People look at it and they think, what's a legacy SQ? And they think, well, I don't have one of those. And I do, so so I like it. I think it's a cool little, it's like a little inside joke with myself sort of thing, and I really like it. And I believe that is everything that I've done. Yes. Oh, I should talk about the LEDs just a wee bit. Um, it's worth noting that I put a lot of time and effort into the wiring of these because I wanted them to be really special and dynamic and OEM styled. So the LEDs that are in the center console, in the cup holders, under there, in this cubby pocket, and in the glove box, and in all of the doors, all the door LEDs as well, those all only turn on with the park lights. Pretty standard, you only need them on when it's uh, like at night, you know? So they turn on with the park lights. What's different though with some other ones that I did, so the LED strips which are above the driver and passenger's feet, behind their legs and above the rear passenger's feet, those ones can turn on either with the park lights or if a door opens or like they're set to turn on at the same time as these ones. So they'll turn on when the door opens as well as when the park lights are turned on and I did a rel uh, relay to get that to work and you can check out the video for that. The LEDs in the boot that are around the amplifier and around the crossovers, those only ever turn on when the trunk is open, whether the power of the car is on or off, they turn on when the trunk is open. So the point is like they don't need to be on if no one's looking at them. So as soon as you open the trunk, they turn on and you can see them and they look good. And I believe that's everything. Yeah, I think so. Oh, something I totally forgot that I spent so much time on, sound deadening. I have sound deadened this entire car. The doors, the outer skin is done with Focal Bam, the inner skin is done with Dynamat, and pretty much everywhere else in the car is done with Dynamat. The, the whole roof is done, the floor all the way back is done with Dynamat, and even um, some sections of the rear quarter panels are done with Dynamat. I'll get out and I'll get, show you that. So this is the front panel. You can hear it's kind of tinny and rattly. Whereas the back with the doors, sounds more like wood. That's good. That's a wee bit tinny still, but I have got some on there to help. Um, I dynamated the whole, like all the way up the driver's uh, kick floor wells because I wanted to get rid of the noise coming from the front tires. And I did the wheel wells over the rear tires as well to get rid of some of that noise. Here's the roof. So just to, just to let you know, like, that's what it used to sound like. And now, has made an amazingly huge difference. So the parking sensors, because I totally forgot to uh, show you guys how they work. I bought them off AliExpress. You can check out my whole video on them, but basically, um, if I drive up to something like Fords and they go too close, they will turn on, and I will see something. I will see something along this line. So that's the view from the front camera. I intentionally left those parking lines on because they lined up pretty well and I get this nice little readout on the right hand side of how close things are to my car, distance wise and position. And then if I go into reverse, obviously it switches over to the reversing camera and we get the same thing. And it does beep, I just had the beeping turned off for that so I could talk to you guys about it and you could understand and not have to deal with the beep. So yeah, the reverse one is triggered when you obviously go into reverse and something, uh, as soon as you go into reverse, it displays that image so you can see what's behind you and it lets you know and starts beeping and stuff. But the front one is only triggered if you get really close to something. Like if I'm about a meter away from something, it will start beeping like beep, beep, beep. But it's not until I'm like literally half a meter away from something that it switches the video on and I can actually see what's in front of me because you don't necessarily need to see directly in front of the car or get that whole uh, view from straight away. You only need it when you're really, really close to something. So that's how that works. Oh, and the side camera. The side camera works uh, just by me going into camera view. 
is this stereo has two camera inputs and you can see there that's the view from my left wing mirror camera and I just use that for doing parallel parks so that I don't scrape my wheels along the curb and I can and it means I can park nice and close without sticking out into the road too much and I believe that is everything that I've done to my car guys let me just check my notes because uh, I did have a big long uh, notes list of things that I was planning on doing to this car which I slowly checked off one by one and I've still got some things that aren't quite checked off that I might do in the future but I've I'm making this video now because I feel like the Project Legacy is kind of finished pretty much finished so Project Legacy sound system Pioneer ABH X8850 BT done front speakers Focal PS165 FX done so those I did used to have the two-way components in this but then I upgraded to the three ways which are the F3s Rear speakers, Focal PC1653, uh, PC165F, done. Five channel amplifier, Rockford Fosgate T1000X5AD, done. Rockford Fosgate T1S1-12 in the box is done. By the way, that box is a prefabricated Rockford Fosgate box. They are originally designed for their little P300 active 12 inch subwoofers with the amp built into the side. But And I really like the way the box has looked, so I asked them to send me one down. Um, just the box itself, no basic subwoofer or amplifier on the side of it, obviously I've got my own. And then I strengthen the entire inside of it by doing fiberglass and resin on the inside. And then the Focal PS165 F3 upgrade. And then, next project, the big three, alternator power wire, battery to chassis, ground kit, power cables for the amplifiers, done, RCA plus speaker cables plus remote wire plus the PLC2 cable is done. By the way, I ran new speaker wires everywhere in this car, nothing factory. I ran new wires from the amp to the rear speakers, wires from the amp to the crossovers, out to all six speakers in the front. The PLC2 done, it's all the rear speakers done, it's all the front speakers and tweeters done. Amp and crossovers done in the back there with the plexiglass above them to make them look good. Strengthen the subwoofer box, yep. Sound deadening in the uh, doors done. Sound deadening on the floor and the wheel arches done. LED OEM style daytime running lights, done. Uh, I have got here fog light bulbs to LEDs, that's something I haven't done yet. I was thinking about upgrading my factory fogs to either LEDs or HIDs of some kind. Power inverter install, done. Battery charger quick disconnect install, haven't done that, that's something I could do. I've got a battery charger in the garage and I was thinking of putting some kind of quick disconnect um, like wired into the car so I can just like basically plug the charger in rather than having to do the battery clamp situation that's something I could do in the future illuminated door sills um, that's something I've wanted to do I've seen you can get door sills like this piece here if the camera would focus because of this piece here I've seen you can get versions of that with like light up legacy along there I thought that'd be quite cool but the ones I've seen are quite expensive, like in the hundreds of dollars just for a light, so maybe not at this point. Uh, chameleon headlight film install. I was thinking about wrapping my headlights in that kind of rainbowy chameleon uh, vinyl wrap stuff. I don't know if I want to do that or not. Maybe you guys let me know if you think that would be cool or not. Air horn. Yep, that's done. I have an air horn. It works really, really well. Uh, factory horns, two factory horns as well as a great big air horn, and it's really, really loud. Uh, wrap dash and door trims in cream slash tan vinyl so this is something I was thinking about doing but haven't done yet these trims which go along the doors here and also in front of the glove box and on the side pieces here beside the steering wheel I was thinking of wrapping those in like a cream or a tan colored vinyl to match like the headlining and the A pillars I thought it would be cool because it would like stand out quite a bit if you imagine that color there along these pieces it would be quite contrasty and I thought it would stand out and look cool just something I'm thinking about. Interior mood lighting, red. The reason I went red, by the way, is because the factory lighting in this car is all red. So behind the uh, factory buttons, the steering wheel controls, the window controls, all these things on the right, behind the heater controls, all of it lights up red factory. So I went with the OEM style and put other red lighting everywhere. Under dash LED strip, running off door switch, yes. Next to the amp and crossovers, yes. Center console, LED, eagle eye, done. Glove box, red LED, done. Rear of door pockets, LED, eagle eye, done. Under the heater, LED, eagle eye, done. Center drink holder, LED bulb fittings, done. Under the seats, LED strips, done. Emblem projector door lights, that's something I forgot to tell you. 
Um, you're not going to be able to see them because it's so bright outside, but the courtesy lights under the uh, front doors, which normally illuminate the ground for you when you get out, have been swapped out for ones that project the Subaru logo down on the ground, and I'll show you guys that later on tonight. Done. Interior light bulbs to LED replacements. Done. So that's these ones, that centre one, and the one further back there. Only ones I haven't done, as I say, are these ones, but they don't get used very much. Parking cameras, done. One in the back, one in the front, one on the side. Dash cam plus radar detector install. I did that quite early on, they're hardwired. USB plus auxiliary under the heater, done. USB 2 plus auxiliary plus a permanent power cigarette socket in the center console, done. Park light upgrade to LEDs, done. Steering wheel controls, done. Volt meter in the glove box, done. Parking sensors, four in the front, four in the back, done. And I believe that is everything, guys. So that's a lot to go through, just sitting here listing it off. I've done a lot of work on this car. So that's, yeah, that's the rundown, guys. That's everything I've done to this car. Maybe a couple more things I'll do in the, in the future at some point. Um, this video isn't over yet. I'm gonna come back to you at around about dusk and show you what some of the LEDs look like around the outside of the car. The inside ones look really good at night. So I'll see you then. And one last thing that I totally forgot to mention that what for some reason was, wasn't on my list of things that I was to do to this car. Uh, I put a module in so that the wind mirrors fold up when you, when you lock the car. So just like... Pretty simple. Lock. Unlock. And as well as that being installed, the factory uh, close them button does still work. So if I'm on accessory... Oop, the key needs to be in the car. So if I'm on accessory... This button here still does work. That was just like one other thing that I forgot to mention. Six hours later. Okay guys, it's uh, 10 past nine. It's getting cool, getting cold out here. It's that perfect kind of uh, sunset -y time halfway. Not really sunset, a little bit after sunset, just sort of coming along towards dusk. And it's still light out like I can see, but it's getting dark and now the LEDs look really, really good. So. Uh, Let's just go to the front of the car. I've got all the headlights and everything completely turned off. And those driving lights look really, really good. Actually, they're coming through a bit brighter than I was expecting. Let me just see if I can... There we go. That, so that's more what they look like to the human eye. If I go back up to regular. They look real good. So I, that's why I love driving my car at this time of night because coming down the road, it just looks so cool. I'll just turn the park lights on. That's auto. So that's just park. I have got my fog light set to turn on my park. And now, you can see the blue LED in there. It's really hard to get the camera to mimic what my eyes see because if I set the camera to zero, oh yeah, there we go, that looks pretty good. Got the nice blue. Same on that side. Touch of blue coming through. And then around the back, the blue lights will be on. Yep, there we go. Looks good. By the way, so um, a lot of people have said to me when I did this uh, video on installing those originally, are those illegal in New Zealand? I am not 100% sure, but I've had many cops pass me with these blue lights on and I've taken it for a waff uh, once since I've had it because it only just passed out of its factory warrant and they've never been a problem so no one's pulled me up on it so I guess it's not illegal I know it is illegal to have red and blue red or blue uh, underglow lights or headlights or something like that but because that can I don't know it if it's like trying to copy the cops but these, no one's pulled me up on these and I've actually started seeing a few people around with legacy starting to copy me So I'm really happy with them. So that's those outside lights By the way, if I turn it back to uh, auto That's the main headlights turning on These are just the factory HID lights I love the way this car looks at night. Right, so that's all the uh, exterior lights. Although I can show you these now. So when I open the door, there's these Subaru logos. And that has replaced the factory courtesy lights. Same on this side. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm gonna sit in the car now because it's getting cold out here. 10 de oh, 16 degrees. Okay. It's getting here where it's a bit warmer. Okay, there we go. Alright, so now let me just turn the lights completely off. Okay, there we go. Lights are in off mode because this car has auto lights, so it does its own thing. One thing I've noticed that's interesting. Oh, is she going to be able to get past me? Yep, we're okay, cool. One thing I've noticed that's interesting is even when the park lights and everything is off, for some reason, my window control lights, well actually all of them, still stay lit up. It's not going to be able to focus because it's such a tiny light, but um, yeah, they still stay lit up for some reason, nothing else does. But if I just turn it straight on to auto or park, here's what we're greeted with. So there's the factory red lights, if I put my foot, if I put my hand over there, you can see those are factory red, those are factory red, red, the heater is factory red, and now you're starting to see some of the lights that I've installed myself. So you can see down by my legs, the, the leg well is lit up really nicely, just looking at the screen on the camera, it is a bit brighter on camera than it is in real life, if I adjust this, That there is what it's is more like what it's like in real life. It's not so bright. And then there's that one underneath there. If I lift up this pocket, you'll see there's the lights that are above the pocket and the one down the back. Passenger's foot well glowing nicely red. You can see the lights in the back of the pockets that I've done. Center console light. Lighting that up nicely. Cup holder lights. Now this is going to be hard to see, but there's five. There's one, two, three, four, five. Just standard red LEDs with resistors in there, running off the factory illumination circuit. There's that strip, and there's a strip obviously under there. And if I uh, just lean my seat right back, I'll be able to point the camera in the back half. Oh, by the way, something that's interesting. See that blue light up there? That's factory. Now that's a tiny little blue LED, and it shines down here and makes this whole area like the silver glow up really really blue. See if I put my hand over the LED, see it's gone but if I take it, put my finger away, why is that blue? So that's one interesting little mood lighting thing that Subaru did. Red LEDs in the back of the door pockets. I'm going to turn the uh, contrast back up so that you can see a bit better. There we go. In the back of the door pockets. That one and that one underneath the passenger seat and underneath the driver's seat. Sorry if it's coming through really black. One thing I've learnt with cameras is it doesn't matter, well, it probably does matter how expensive it is, but I'm not a huge, uh, I, I don't know how to use this DSLR to its fullest potential. Someone would, pro would probably know how to make it so that you can see both me and the lights at the same time. But I'm not hugely talented. Oh, that looks a wee bit better. Let's turn the contrast up a wee bit. Brightness. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, the glove box as well. It's also glowing red and you can see my nice red voltmeter there, 14 and a half volts. So yeah, everything's looking real good. I love being in this car at night. Just the whole thing is a great big red glow fest. <laughs> Let's just push the finger on this button so that goes out. Look at all that red, that is so beautiful. So, if you remember earlier I said that the strip lights on the seats are hooked up to the door switch as well. So they come on whether the lights are on or if a door is opened. So I'll show you that now. What I need to do is, so if I just turn the lights off completely, they're all gone now. If I open a door, okay now all these lights are going to turn on in here, but if I turn these off, gone, gone, you'll notice that the floor wells have stayed illuminated red. And let me just show you something, because if I have these on, so when I close the door, see how they dim away? Like that. I turn these off. And now I close the door. They dim away. Just like factory. So I'm really happy with the way I got those wired up. They work, they work just the red lights around the seats work exactly how all the factory ones do when you turn the lights on and exactly how the uh, factory mm, what would you call these uh, dome lights work so they turn on 
when a door is open, they turn on when you turn off the car, like you watch this. Um, as soon as I turn the car off, I think, it, see? And now the floor wells are glowing red. It's like a courtesy thing. If I had these lights on, these would be on. As soon as you turn the car off, the car lights up to, so you can see what you're doing. Something else I love about Subaru. But eventually this will die away. Usually in the time that this is on, though, you open a door and you get out. Yeah, it's starting to dim now. And gone. Cool. Something else I'll show you that is really cool about this. Try and show you. Actually, if I start by putting my window down so we can see a bit better. So now if I lock it. So you can see how it's completely dark in there. I'm going to put my keys in my pocket. And I'm going to walk up to the car. And this should work. There we go. They turned on. Normally those ones would turn on. That was my fault. I stuck my hand in the window whilst the alarm system was armed because those ultrasonic sensors picked me up. That's my fault. I forgot about that. But uh, yeah, normally these lights turn on as well. But as I was just, I was just trying to show you that the red lights turn on and they kind of make it hard to see the red light. But they're on now. I realized something else that I uh, forgot to show you guys was the indicators. Because I mentioned earlier how the, uh, what's the name, lights? There's the driving light on, but when you turn the indicator on, it stops and it starts flashing amber. So if I just put my hand over that, you can see the beam is lighting up orange as well. And then as soon as I take the indicator off, it goes back to white. Left side, back to white. So yeah, that's how that's all wired up. Okay, let's get in here because it's cold. So yeah, that's all of the lights in my car. Oops. Hopefully you guys think that they look decent. How many LEDs? I did count them once. Let's do one final count. Inside we have... Oh, sorry, I haven't shown you the back. I haven't shown you the... Um... Oh, God, it's cold in here. To be in shorts. Open up our boot. Okay. So now this light only turns on when you open the boot rather than all the doors. Let's just unclip this again. Lift up this tray. There's my amplifier, all lit up in red, looking nice. And the crossovers. Yeah, and as I say, those lights only turn on when the boot is open, because they are hooked to the same trigger as this light here. See, I've got it on, same trigger as that light, so if I close the boot, you'll see that that will go out. And now the amp lights are off as well. And yeah, that's everything. You can see that it does look a lot better at night than it does during the day. Only thing I think I wish is that uh, I wish the daytime running lights that I installed maybe were a wee bit brighter for during the day, but I guess that's what you get with cheap ones. I am one of those people who's always gonna try the cheap option first before I just fork out and spend for something. I'm always trying to save money. But yeah, that's everything. So, LEDs in the back. I'm just gonna call each one of those things a one. So the crossovers, one. Amplifier, two. Back doors, three, four. Front doors, five, six, seven. We'll just call this eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. That's eighteen on the inside, and then outside, the rear tail lights, nineteen, twenty, front park lights. 21, 22, daytime running lights, 23, 24. If you want to count the indicator side of it, 25, 26. 27, 28, 29, 30. Is that one's upgraded? 30, is that all of them? Yeah, I think that's all of them. 30 separate locations that LEDs have been installed. There'll be more than that actual LEDs because of strips and stuff but um 30 separate locations where LEDs have been installed and I'm quite proud. Alright let's check this back in the garage. So now I'm going to turn the car off. It all lights up. Floors go red. The cabin lights up yellow or warm white whatever you want to call it. And we can get out of the car and then you open it up. We've got a nice Subaru logo to greet us on the ground. There we go. Lock it. I'm pushing the button. And it goes dim. 
And that is all the LEDs on my car at night. Hopefully you can see me at the moment. It's gotten a bit darker since we've been out here actually. It goes pretty quickly. So yeah, just thought I'd give you guys that little look at it at night, just because it does look so much better. So that, guys, has been a total car check for my 2014 Subaru Legacy, where I've done a lot of LEDs, a super high quality sound system, and an electrical upgrade, and the whole car has been sound in. That's pretty much everything I've done. Thank you guys for watching this video. Leave me a like if you thought I've done a good job with my car. I'm always open to suggestions if you think there's other things I could be doing to it. Maybe, maybe not, who knows. And as I said earlier, I will put the link for the playlist where I installed all of that stuff in the card at the end of this video. So make sure you check that out and watch some videos if you haven't seen them. And subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of uh, Judy. And as I said at the end of my videos, guys, choose to be happy. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Kakadana. Oh, 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 oh,